Namaste and hello. This is your Sanskrit instructor welcoming you back into lesson number 28, where we will be introducing ourselves to declensions. By the end of this video, we should understand what is a declension and how declensions are used in Sanskrit. So in the bold italics under the title declensions, I have two sentences. The girl desires the god and the god desires the girl. They're the same, both of the sentence has the same types of words, but they're just in a different order. And just even though they're the same types of words in both of the sentences, the same number of words, just because of the order, both of these sentences have a completely different meaning. So in English, the order of the words changes the meaning of the sentences. But however, the beauty of Sanskrit is that in Sanskrit, because there are such things as declensions, the order of the sentence does not change the meaning. And this is what I love about Sanskrit. Um, it, it becomes a beautiful thing because um, Sanskrit, it makes the meaning more precise. So, um, for number one, in Sanskrit, the grammatical function of a noun in a sentence is indicated by special terminations called case endings. For instance, the noun, we all this time we've been working with verbs. Now we're going to start working with nouns so that eventually we'll start making sentences. So declensions pertain to nouns. So for instance, the noun, this is a new vocabulary word, putra, putra means son. Okay, so for instance, the noun putra becomes putraha when it is a subject. And it becomes putram when it is a direct object. What we express by means of prepositions, such as with, by, to, form, of, in, etc., is also rendered into Sanskrit by case endings. There are eight case endings in Sanskrit, and those eight cases are nominative, accusative, instrumental, dative, ablative, genitive, locative, and vocative. So back to the word putra, okay? Putraha is a type of declension. It's declined from putra. And putram is also another declension of putra. So now we'll understand what the case endings are in Sanskrit. The nominative, accusative, instrumental, dative, ablative, genitive, locative, and vocative. I have in English what all of these things mean, and then we will touch upon the Sanskrit later. So nominative is the subject. So an English example would be the boy reads the book. The boy here would be nominative. Accusative here would be the object, the same sentence. However, the book here is the object. So you have the subject and then you have the object. So the boy reads the book. So the book is the object. So the book is the, is the noun that is taking the accusative case here. Instrumental, by or with. So an, in, um, an example of that would be the boy reads the book with glasses, by or with the glasses. So that's instrumental. The glasses here are instrumental. Dative, two. The boy reads the book to the girl. So the boy reads the book could be one sentence by itself, but the fact that to the girl is adding more detail as to what he's actually doing with that book. Who is he reading that book to? Where is he reading that book? So that is showing that he's reading the book to the girl. It's showing um, a sense of direction. So that is dative. Ablative is from. The boy reads the book from the shelf. 
So that is indicating where that book is coming from, from the shelf. So the shelf here is ablative. Genitive. The boy is reading the girl's book. Or another example would be the boy reads the book of the girl. Genitive is showing that the book, the book is the, is the noun that is genitive here. It is showing that the book is belonging to the girl. It's the book of the girl. It's the book that belongs to the girl. It's the girl's book. Okay. So book here is the keyword that is actually um, taking that genitive case. Of. Keyword is of. Locative. In. The boy reads the book in the room. So the room here would be locative. The room is taking the, the locative case and it is in the room. So that's showing a sense of location. And vocative is used for direct address. So an example sentence would be, son, read the book. So son, you're calling out to your son. The son here is in direct address here. You're calling out to your son. So that is being used in the vocative case. So back to putra, so putraha is the subject, and as we just learned, the subject is a nominative case. So putraha is the nominative case of putra. Putram is the, do, is the object, so putram is the accusative case of putra, that means son. Moving on. So as in the verb, so also in the noun. Sanskrit, just like the verb, it has three numbers, singular, dual, and plural. And Sanskrit has three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. So these nouns um, have masculine, feminine, and neuter, just like French, Spanish, Hindi, they ha um, even Latin. These languages have uh, masculine, feminine, and neuter nouns. Same thing as in Sanskrit. Um, fem um, French and Spanish don't have neuter, but Sanskrit does. Neither does Hindi. Hindi doesn't have neuter as well. They have masculine and feminine. Um, number three. The various forms taken by a noun in all its cases and numbers are called the declension of that noun. So here is your definition of declension. We learned what um, declension is. We're ending this video with the definition. So again, the various forms taken by that noun in all its cases and numbers are called the declension of that noun. So in the next video, we will move on to the actual Sanskrit and we'll learn how to decline Sanskrit nouns. This is your Sanskrit teacher signing off with a namaste.